All right. Good morning. Komatelivu. How are you? Let me get the uh the site going. Oh, where nope, not that one. Where did it go? <laughs> I can't find it. No. Uh there we are. There we are. Where are you? There we go. Now you're back. All right, cool. Welcome to Quant Box Live, where we get our global macro on and uncover the best fundamental investment opportunities across the globe. Hey, my name is Wayne. Nice to meet you. <clears throat> I've been a trader and investor for over 20 years, and I'm also uh, a properly trained and educated <laughs> economist. Yeah, very cool. So anyways, what we're trying to do is look at macroeconomics and follow the money. You ever hear that? <clears throat> follow the money, follow the money. Well, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We can do it short term, we can do it long term, but we do it with facts and not guesses. I was surprised about uh, some of the opinions that I heard on Bloomberg this morning about uh, the Fed. <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, <clears throat> wow, excuse me. And uh, lots of people are still throwing out uh, opinions. Throwing out opinions. They think this and they think that. And yet we know from the Fed meeting yesterday uh, precisely uh, what the Fed thinks. So anyway, so it's good to have the facts and Quantbox pulls that in. Anyways, it costs a little bit of money for the service because it does a lot. It does a lot. I mean, that's the thing. Probably the biggest complaint is there's too much information and it's difficult. So difficult and too much is actually a pretty good thing. So if you become a member and even a trial, even if you take the $8 trial, guess what? It includes a uh, macroeconomics course and it includes a statistical analysis course. Very cool, huh? So you too can become a macroeconomist. Anywho, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus in the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Well, a couple of things. You probably want to talk about the Fed. Well, you know what? That was so yesterday, uh, but we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, other things that I do want to talk about, um, like, for example, the Swiss National Bank uh, left interest rates unchanged today. Okay. And... Apparently, the market was surprised. <laughs> Haven't we been talking about this for like months? Like literally months based on facts. Facts, I tell you, facts. The Swiss National Bank does not want a strong Swiss franc. They don't. It's not good for business. Now, Quantbox knows this. And of course, if you go into the central bank area, okay, okay, and you look at the Swiss National Bank, uh, we have this, we have them paused all of this year and all of next year. And we have it identified here, right here. Look, no changes coming, that they're absolutely totally neutral. And that Quantbox says there's no chance at all they're gonna raise interest rates. None, not even 1% chance. And the market was surprised. Oh my gosh. Huh? Must be terrible to trade and invest that way, having no idea, no clue. So, anyways, uh, too bad for them. Nonetheless, let's get back to here. Uh, we have a Bank of England meeting uh, pretty soon, and uh, that's going to be a complicated one. Okay, that's going to be a complicated one. Uh, I can tell you that they have a lot of inflation. Although we know the, the inflation data out of the UK yesterday was surprisingly low. Surprisingly low. So now there's like, I don't know, a 50-50 chance that they pause. What we really care about is do they tell the world they're done? Now, I don't think there's a high probability of that. But... If they're done raising interest rates, there's no in, there's no need to hold to own the pound. There's just no need. They're done, and at some point, you know, way out in the future, they'll have to cut. But the the thing is, 
What made the pound attractive was the higher yield relative to choices out there. And if they're done, then there's no pay raise in the future, so to speak, right? There, it makes it less attractive to own the pound. The thing is, it, even though inflation is improving, they still have a lot of inflation. You can get that uh, information like you can go to a fundamental analysis, look at inflation. Is it inflation? Uh, that's the one that's messed up. Man, I got to get on. I, I got <laughs> I to start fixing these things. Okay. Uh, like, okay, let's look at that. Isn't it nice to have these tools? All right. Here's inflation in the UK. It's improving, but is it fixed? No. So the, I would suggest that Governor Bailey says, wow, that CPI was really good, but it was, you know, and, and it might be the beginning of something good, but maybe they're not done. Okay. So it might be oversold is kind of what I'm saying. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. The pound has come down a lot because people are assuming that we've hit peak interest rates around the world. <clears throat> the, some people are arguing, this is what I was saying before when I was mumbling through the intro. Um, I heard on Bloomberg today, multiple opinions where they're like, we think the Fed is done raising interest rates. What? What do you mean you think? First of all, I, <laughs> I don't think an analyst should say they think. They should have responded this way. At the, at the FOMC yesterday, had a meeting with 19 people. Seven of them said they're paused. They believe interest rates are at the highest they need to be. Seven. 12 want rates to go up one more time. Why do, why do people on TV give opinions? Oh, we think this, we think that. Oh, we think we're done. Really? You think they're done? When 12 people said, we want to do it one more time. And by the way, if you look into next year, one of the dudes, one of the 12, wants to raise again. Two more. One dude wants two. Seven want none. And 11 say one more. So why don't we, like, it's 11 plus one. <laughs> like, there's 12 people. So to me, that's the fact. So anyways, the Fed's going to raise interest rates one more time. That seems to be the FOMC's opinion. That's not my opinion. And then we look at the, um, you know, what's Bailey going to talk about today? Are they nearly done? I think he could say, look, the, the evidence, core and headline CPI is coming down, and it's coming down hard. Things are starting to work, but they're not done yet, right? So, But there's a 50-50 chance uh, uh, today that they're going to pause. Uh, if you looked out before that CPI, I'm pretty sure they were going to raise one more time. But the way that the market was trading is that there that interest rates have peaked. So it'll be a very interesting meeting. They got a lot of work to do. Got to figure out what's causing that error. Okay. Here's the other issue too, and this is why people probably think. The Bank of England, or the bank, uh, yeah, the Bank of England is done. Is GDP is at zero, and you're like, wait, I can't see that. Okay, this is the zero line. By the way, you guys, if you're a pro subscriber, you have all these tools. So, uh, but anyway, so that that's zero. So that's the issue. That's why we've been playing the idea. Like, if we're in this territory here below zero. The Bank of England can't raise interest rates. Now with that CPI data, with CPI falling, and look, CPI seems to be tracking GDP. This is GDP. So if CPI is coming down, then there's no need to raise hikes, and that's uh, raise rates anymore. They're working. So that's where we're at with the Bank of England today. Uh, 
it's really do they raise or not and ultimately will bailey hint that they're done if they're done pound falls if they're not done that he might raise interest rates again in the future pound gets strong and i don't think people are positioned in such a way that they think the pound's going to get strong of course there's this other thing too if everyone is selling based on the fact that they're betting the bank of england is done then no matter what happens, you right, you sell the rumor, and then it comes out, and they're like, and then he takes a profit. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, it, it, it's going to be interesting. But the Swiss National Bank, it's so amazing that Quantbox would say there's zero chance of a rate hike, and then the market was surprised that there was a pause. Uh huh. Amazing, huh? Amazing. All right. Which is cool, because now you can tell all your friends that you're smart money. And that's worth the price of admission, that alone. All right, cool. So anyways, oil's come off. Remember, we're on our way. Our target was, do you remember this? Our target was $93.50. It got to $93.40 and stopped. Stopped and dropped. How funny, huh? Well, what about the 10 cents? Hang on, Bubba. Yeah, so anyways, uh, uh, oil's down quite a bit. I mean, yesterday, uh, the, the, the summary of economic projections, nothing really changed in the dot plot, but we have clarity <clears throat> as far as there's one more right hike, okay? But did you notice, uh, and, and I did this with... Uh, I did this yesterday in the CIA meeting, I guess it was. We went through the summary of economic projections and I was looking at the lines of where they think GDP is going to be. And then you went, go through and you look at where inflation, where they expect inflation. They have these cool little range, little things that show you what they anticipate the future uh, interest rates. Because remember, these are surveys. So not only... When you answer this survey as a member of the FOMC, where do you think interest rates are going to be this year, next year, the year after, long run? Where do you think GDP is going to be? Where do you think inflation is going to be? These are all these surveys, right? And so they show you that. So nothing really changed in the dot plot, but they doubled the projection for GDP. <laughs> Whoa, what? And inflation... They raised. So that's kind of interesting. And, and that's the bigger news of why things are coming down right now. Um, but I'm not so sure how long that bad, quote unquote, bad news is going to be. See, the bad news is the economy is just perfectly fine. <laughs> that's the bad news. Uh, you know, and here's the thing. I don't know how much it'll change. We know that the inflation has come from COVID, the COVID stimulus package. And they actually said it in, did you catch that part? They said it in the press conference. And here's the interesting thing, because we track all this stuff, us, you and I, it's not in Quantbox, but I do track this. And I am doing that quarterly outlook. Have you guys signed up for that? I'll show you the data. It's in the quarterly outlook. Um, that there are two camps when it comes to the COVID money, people that had, uh, what is it, le less than, was it $10,000 or $5,000? It might have been five. There's, a, there's two camps. People that had less than $5,000 in their bank account before COVID and people that had more than $5,000, rich and poor, right? There were rich people and poor people. But stimulus packages went to everybody. What we know is people that had no money going into COVID suddenly had a lot of money and you can track this. And then that money is now gone and it was spent on mostly food and beverage, food and beverages. That was the number one thing. And then those that didn't need the money still got money and that money is still there. And that's why inflation is high. Um, like the, the consumer keeps spending. So if you look at the consumer um, uh, surveys, 
the, the consumer s surveys show that people feel like things are bad because of inflation. Are things are good or are things bad? Bad. Why? Inflation. But you know what? They got money in the bank and they feel bad, but there's, they, they're still buying. They're still there. Oh, gas prices went up. That's okay. I got a lot of money in the bank because that COVID money is still there. It's still in the economy, not poor people. They've spent it, but everybody that got a stimulus that didn't need it, maybe you spent some of it and built a home office. We saw that and all of a sudden you couldn't buy an HP printer anywhere. You couldn't find a desk. <laughs> I remember when COVID hit, I wanted to buy my kids uh, bicycles. You couldn't get a bicycle anywhere, like nowhere. It was amazing, right? So anyways, those supply chains uh, have normalized, but this inflation is still there because, well, there's most people still have money. So anyways, interesting. Uh, so... Will the stock market come back? I think so. But I have to be careful. I don't want to overdo it, but I'm 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 still okay. It doesn't look like we're gonna get a recession this year. That's that's the basis of what I'm trying to think. Uh anyways, no recession this year. We should be okay. Euro dollar, not a lot going on there. Bitcoin down a bit. Okay, the stock markets came down quite a bit yesterday. So why don't we, uh, before we do the uh, the scatter plot, let's just do the risk gauges. I want to show you that not a lot has changed here either. Even after yesterday, it was the end of the world. Right? The S&P 500 dropped, what, one and a half percent? Okay, it's not the end of the world. Um, Nothing's changed in the long term. Okay. Now, the thing is, this was, I think, negative 22, but it's still a positive number. We got some volatility in the last week. Obviously, this was from yet, uh, yesterday <clears throat> and going into yesterday. So, over like the last week, pretty much everything, like Dixie is flat, but okay, pretty much everything is negative. But to date, maybe a rebound day, we're not sure, too early, and we got that Bank of England. I keep watching the clock. Uh, but on the long run, look, it's okay, man. Nothing, nothing is freaking out right now. You might feel it, right? I watched the markets a lot yesterday. <laughs> My day trading group, uh, our group meeting consisted of us listening to the news, watching the charts, and me smoking a cigar to keep myself busy. <laughs> right? To keep the panic down, right? Yeah, to keep the panic down. So anyways, but look, when you look at the facts, you're like, you know, it's okay, man. It's okay. Don't freak out. It's all right to be concerned because that makes you ready, willing, and able, but not to freak out either. All right, let's look at the scatter plot and see where we are now. And oh my God. Okay, lots going on. Things are all over the place. One thing to recognize though, there are a lot of assets that are doing what QuantBox suggested would be normal. See, bullish and expected. So anything up here is fine. Everything down here is expected. Maybe not wanted, but not unexpected. These are the surprises up here. Notice the Swissy weakness. That's what the Swiss National Bank wants. This is what I've been preaching been preaching this preaching <laughs> okay and so good this is what the swiss national bank is trying to design weeks was frank weeks was frank weeks was frank weeks was frank why why did they not raise interest rates because they don't want to give you a reason 
to move money to Swiss bank accounts. You're like, well, what, what do you mean? That makes the Swiss franc strong at a time when the euro was weak. And guess what? If you've never been to Europe before, let me draw a map for you. Right? Uh, <laughs> you're going to love this map. Uh, uh, so we'll do Spain. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. There, right? Switzerland is here. Okay. And this is Europe. All around them. And guess what? Switzerland does a lot of business with Europe. And you're like, no, that's not the Mediterranean. Sorry, this is North Africa. That's supposed to be uh, <laughs> Sweden, Norway. All right. Uh, anyways, terrible, terrible. Anyway, Switzerland's in the middle is what I'm trying to say. And they do a lot of business with Europeans. Europeans have money that is worth less and less and less and less. So if the Swiss franc goes up in value while the euro is falling, cuckoo clock sales plummet because they become more expensive to a Frenchman. Rolexes become more expensive. Okay? Chocolate and cheese. And yes, my favorite memory of Switzerland is buying some wine and some cheese at a store in Zurich. Couldn't find the cheese I was looking for. So I asked the, the dumbest question I've ever asked in my entire life. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I, can't, I can't find the Swiss cheese. Do you have any Swiss cheese? <laughs> what an idiot. And he looked at me and it's like, it's all Swiss cheese. <laughs> well, of course it is. So anyways, yeah. No, I'm like, you know, the ones with the holes in it. I'm, uh, you know, anyways, but he's like, it, it's all Swiss cheese. And I'm like, well, yeah, what a, what was, what a dummy. So anyways, yeah. So uh, Sw Switzerland wants a, a cheap. Think of it this way. They sell cheese and chocolate, cuckoo clocks, and banking services to everybody in Europe. So a strong Swiss franc makes all of that expensive. Think of them as exporters. Okay? Think of them as exporters to Europe. So the worst thing in the world is a weak euro and a strong Swiss franc for the Swiss National Bank. And so once you understand that, then you you understand the the thought process of a Swiss of a Swiss Central banker. Cool. So when people are shocked, that means they don't understand. Cool. So anyways, everything over here is good. Everything up here is good. And then everything like Swiss, 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 everything up here makes sense. Remember, not quantitatively, because it's not happening yet. But in general, it still makes sense. Adam says, uh, it's funny that the S&B doesn't mention that it's overvalued. Uh, well, uh, maybe they will now that the euro, euro I mean, if, if, the, if the ECB is done and the euro is on a two-year slide, okay, yeah, then it is overvalued relative to euro, right? So Adam... Euro has been fairly strong because they were expected to raise interest rates forever. And now suddenly they're done. All right. Well, so now, right, things may change. And therefore, that Swiss franc may become overvalued relative to the euro. The only thing that can kind of change things is that suddenly the dollar does weaken. And money moves from U.S. dollar to Europe. Maybe because something is risk on, 
and the U.S. stock market is rallying like crazy, and it gets very expensive, and suddenly Americans feel risk on, and the cheaper deals are in Europe. See, you might have bought Apple and Microsoft and Facebook and Google a year and a half ago on the, you know, the COVID crash. And it went from 25, those stocks went from 25 times earnings to 50 times earnings, but you already own it and you're already profitable. Wait, you need more? No. So you're like, you start looking for, see, we're entering a regime of, there's no monetary policy support. Like we don't have quantitative easing where the Fed is just throwing money at everything. See, when you do that, you just buy a stock index and you're like, you're good. It's going to go up because everything's going up, okay? So now we're not in that world anymore, and this is a world for stock pickers. Now you have to be careful of what you own and how much you own. You don't just buy anything and everything. The stock indices might actually be generally flat for the next five years. So now your alpha is to pick the right stock. And so if we roll into a world like that, then a rich American hedge fund that already owns a bunch of stuff from two years ago when they got it cheap, now they need something new. They need new alpha. Because just buying more Google at twice, right, at twice your cost it's not good anymore. It kind of ruins everything. So what you do is you're like, hey, look, I can buy BMW for, you know, 14 times earnings instead of more Google at 47 times earnings. Or, you know, and suddenly you're looking at Europe. You probably don't want an Italian bank, but how about a Dutch bank? You're like, oh, let's put, put some ING into the portfolio. So, um, uh, so, Society, Society Generale is down, what, 10 12%? Maybe you want to pick it up cheap, okay? And if we get that, then the flow of capital moves back to Europe and the dollar weakens, and just because of that, Euro recovers. And that could really happen. And then, then the Swiss National Bank doesn't have to be so worried. But that narrative is plausible and almost expected, but it's not happening now, okay? Okay. And look at this. Somewhere around this time of year, USD Swiss franc tends to fall. But it's the dollar mostly. So you could try to isolate it like, well, what about Kiwi Swiss franc? Just randomly grabbing something that's not dollar. Okay. And now we look at this. Okay. September tends to, ooh, let me delete this. Okay. September tends to be a bottom a bottom period okay september october november all the way and then even december is positive but peaks out here so relative to the kiwi weeks swiss franc is fairly normal starting right around now and today the swiss franc got week it's kind of interesting right look down month down month down month up month okay and this is what the 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 kiwi swiss frank actually did down 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 a little bit of reprise and then down 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 okay which you can see from here to here to here 
and they recovered fairly early. Okay, usually it could last a little longer. So something was probably going on here or with one of these central banks. But you can see it's generally followed, right? It's generally followed pretty well. Okay, again, green is the 20 year average. So think of it like in this, this period here, right? There's a lot of weakness. There's some weakness. There's more weakness. And the weakness ends around here. That's right. And then the gray line is what's actually happened on this pair. We can look at the ultimate one. Okay. Down, big down month, dig, big down month, small down month. Okay. And a little positive month and then down again. So you can see like what we're looking at is the, all of this is down. This is less down. This is a little bit of up. So you can think of this period somewhere between March and April could be a little up and there was one, right? And then it, then what? Then, then you should expect down, 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 down for quite some time. Okay. Generally that's happened. So now we're in this period here of extreme weakness to less weakness to some positive to flat and then probably down. Can you see that? So June, July, August tend to be a general period of bearishness. Actually, even it's, it's supposed to, right, kind of like this. Really, April, May, June, July, August, and then somewhere around September, October, October, right? And then November and then December. And it's, you know, it's... This is, the moves are fairly normal, right? So you have to understand like, cool. So this is Euro Swissy. Typically money is flowing from Switzerland into Europe until, you know, October and somewhere by the end of the year, money flows out of Europe back to Switzerland. So Swissy weakness, Swissy weakness, Swissy weakness, and then top out and then drop by the end of the year. Cool. So it seems like everything is fairly normal so far and having some Swiss franc weakness in September is perfectly accepted. And it should last till probably November, AKA the Fed meeting. So even though US dollar doesn't exist on this, this pair, it's still an influence because remember it's the reserve currency. So anyways, I feel like I went too long today, apologize. Too much coffee, too much tea, too much energy drinks. So uh, I'm fired up, fired up. So uh, thank you for being here this morning. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Uh, oh, yeah, and don't forget the the fourth quarter. Do I have that? Do I have that somewhere? Sign up for the fourth quarter event. I think here it is. Yeah, I, I still have it. I should probably make a special page for it instead of just a checkout. But nonetheless, I'll, I'll post it here. Oh, I'll post it here. Sign up. Uh, it's less than a week away. And so we'll look at things like how much money is still hanging around because of COVID. And we can talk about how that persistent pressure uh, is going to be a burden on Jay Powell's shoulders.
for some time to come. Oh, yeah, thank you, Denise. I got to go do the BOE. So, again, have a wonderful day. I'll see you when I see you. Thanks for being a subscriber to uh, QuantBox. Cheers.